which will be the evolution of the use of social media in the business field? Well, I mean, you're already seeing the the evolution, the ad, the, uh, the the adoption of social media in uh, in business. I mean, you you see the kind of like the first step of. Uh, getting a presence on on social media channels, right? Which is kind of like the the main focus of what's what's been going on right now. You have to get your Facebook wall. You have to have your Facebook account, your Twitter accounts. Now companies are going crazy trying to get on Pinterest for whatever strange reason, uh, just because it's the flavor of the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's this there's this rush not to be left behind now, and that's that's kind of the uh, the, the stage that we're in for most companies. But I think that moving forward areas that are going to change or evolve a little bit for businesses um, are, are going to be in, first of all, analytics. Uh, and I'm not talking about measurement and monitoring. I'm talking about actually analyzing data. And one of the great um, opportunities with social is that when you look at, at, at a platform like Facebook – or Pinterest or Twitter, people are constantly giving personal information away. Uh, and I think that the second evolution is is really something that we've been talking about since the very beginning of this social media, you know, evolution, uh, which is the humanization of, bland, of brands. Right? We're talking about humanizing corporations, which is sometimes very difficult. What? Where do you think the the fine line, you know, stands? Because there has been so much talking about the privacy and uh, the, uh, you know, the importance that data has and the fact that most Facebook users or Google users don't actually know what ha- what happens when they surf right. the internet. So where do you think, you know, the you have to you have to put that line? Well, you know, it's it's funny the uh the, the caption don't be evil, which is Google's line is is actually right on the money. That's really where you need to be. It's just you you can't just say it. You have to also uh, you know, act accordingly. Um, the second thing is allowing people to really truly opt in, not just say, I understand and, you know, shut up, sign me up, right? I'm just clicking this because I have to. Uh, but also letting people truly say, yes, that's okay. I understand why you're going to use my data or that, that really the data that you're collecting from me is going to help advertisers target me with ads that are relevant to me as opposed to getting stupid ads all day long by, by companies I don't care about. I think there's a difference between Big Brother and Big Mother. And Big Brother, of course, is the, you know, the 1984, the George Orwell, you know, the state owns everything and controls you. It's a, a theme that comes back a lot when we talk about data and privacy. But then there's Big Mother, which in my opinion is essentially the same, the same mechanism but the data is used for you. So, of course, a platform like Facebook would benefit because they can sell that data to advertisers and that's how they make a lot of their money. But at the same time, they protect the consumer and they, they protect your, your, your time in a way and your by uh, matching you with the ideal brands at the right time. How, at, at what amount, for what amount does a uh, well-structured social media strategy actually have uh, an effect for a company today? You know, it could work, it could not work. You could have a hundred really good people working on it and it might completely flop because it missed a point and nobody cares. Um, or you could have a really small business like a, like a butcher shop and they're on Twitter and Facebook and they're, and, and they're doing stuff and by virtue of the fact that they're really you know they've they've connected with their audience and their community it's it's gangbusters for them i'm going i'm going to ask you one question about the book because um you described it in your um biography um as a book as a blueprint for companies looking to build social media programs that will actually yield results not just fans and followers right so how do you how do you actually reconcile this part with what you just said, you know, about engaging people. You know, we're talking about the success of, of a social media program. Um, like at what point does it become successful? And, and I think you start to see where it becomes successful when you start seeing, you know, activity, when you start seeing engagement. That's the point where, where you kind of, uh, in French, would say, passer le cap, which is to, to go around that corner and you start to see things happen. And so wherever you have those two things, generating more revenue or saving more money, 
by doing things in a more cost efficient way, then you have the potential for ROI. You know, it should be said, and I know it's, it's kind of common sense, but it's easy to forget it. Social media is not free. Uh, the platforms are free, but but you need qualified people to add to your communities, to, to strategize, to create content. What is social media ROI today? Is it return of influence or is rather ROE, return of engagement? Yeah, no, neither. It's it's return on investment, uh, right. period. This, the, you know, I... I actually don't mind the return on engagement and return on on influence and return on fans and all that. It's, you know, it's cute and and it's in a way it's a nice exercise of trying to understand how all these other pieces fit into the uh, what do I get for you know the time I spent on this. You know, whether it's social media, whether your 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 focus is marketing or sales or business development or HR, it doesn't matter. The ROI of social media is always going to be the same thing. It's the, like the ROI or everything else. You invest money into it. You get money out of it. Um, there's, there's a relationship between that investment and that actual outcome. There's a very simple equation that's, that's in every business book and that has been there since the beginning of time. ROI has always been the same. So it, it, it doesn't need to change now. But by the same token... It's important to realize that that ROI deals with activity, not medium. So when you're investing in something, you're investing in a particular activity, like a, a an ad, for example, or a marketing campaign, or a social media program that does things. And uh, so the medium is relevant, right? I mean, you you also can't ask what's the ROI of TV. Or what's the ROI of radio? Or what's the ROI of print? It's ludicrous. Well, social media is you know a set of, of you know mediums, just like newspapers and 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 TV, and um, and it's impossible to determine the exact ROI of the medium because you can take two ads or two activities and put them in the same medium, and they will have completely different results.